Hi, this is a demo of my favorite pie crust. It has cream cheese, butter, heavy cream, vinegar, and a few other elements. And it's been in every one of my books where there's a pie crust, most recently in Rose's Baking Basics. But I've never before showed exactly how I make it. And in fact, I now have a new way, which is a kind of combination way. Sometimes I would do it all in the food processor. Sometimes I would do it all by hand. This is half and half. And the reason I came up with it this way is because when I make a double pie crust, my hands are small and I have trouble handling the whole dough at the same time. But this way works really easily for me and it will, I think, for you too. Especially if your hands are cool and you can always cool them down with some ice water or in winter, keep the room as cold as possible. I like 65 degrees. So we start with, and I'm using pastry flour, but if you use all purpose, either bleached or unbleached, then add a tablespoon of sugar for one crust, and that will give you the same tenderness. Recent discovery I'm really pleased about. So right now I have 85 grams of the flour, and I already put in the salt, which was a quarter of a teaspoon, and I'm going to put in the baking powder, which I only use the Rumford or other sodium-based baking powder. I would never use one that was sodium based, not because I'm worried about oh, aluminum rather, not that I'm worried about aluminum, this is an eighth of a teaspoon, but it gives a nasty flavor which you can really detect in a pie crust or cookie. And the first step is to just blend the two together. It just takes a few seconds. You can do a double pie crust in this size food processor also. And then the cream cheese, which is a quarter of a cup, 64 grams, cut into a few pieces. And this will be 20 seconds. You don't want to overdo it because then it coats the flour too much, but by putting it in now, it coats it just enough to keep it tender. That's counting in your head is 20 seconds. I cut the butter, I always do it the day ahead so it's ready, into half inch cubes and put it in the freezer when I use the food processor method because the friction of the blade starts softening it. And the first step now is to, you always want to keep everything as cool as possible, is to process or pulse the butter cubes until you have pea-sized pieces. That's before you add the cream and the vinegar. Now the reason I put the baking powder in is that it tenderizes. During baking it actually lifts the crust, but it doesn't tenderize it before baking, so if you're lapping it over to make a lattice crust, it won't break. And the cider vinegar also is designed for that purpose, to, to tenderize the crust and give it a little zip. This takes several pulses to get long pulses. <laughs> If you get to the point where you think you're there and you can't quite see, then use any kind of fork. I like this blending fork to see that you don't have any huge pieces, which we don't. So this is just about right. Now I use one and a half tablespoons of heavy cream, but and I always shake because it tends to gop up in the center, at the top of the center. But you may need a little more in the winter, because winter it's dry. And using cream cheese pretty much gives you the amount that you need of liquid. You don't have to say, well, add four to six tablespoons of water when you use an old water crust. I mean, when you use the, don't use the cream cheese, an old butter crust. So it's, since it's winter, I'm gonna add a rounded tablespoon, and we can always add more later on in the game here. Okay. So now we won't need this anymore. I'll put it on the donut. And one and a half tablespoons, and that's what we're going to use to measure the vinegar as well. Oh yes, here's the vinegar. <laughs> you won't believe that this is such an old style bottle. I always decant it back in because I like it so much better than the new design. I think this is maybe 30 years old. <laughs> See, there's always a little left in the spoon. That's why I like to use the same spoon for the vinegar. A little of the cream is left in. Okay, so you round it. 
And normally in the past, what I would do is I would process or pulse it until the size of small peas, but now I want to leave some of the pieces larger. The most interesting part comes at the end, so please stick with me. That's about six pulses. I always use my ragged spatula when I'm using the food processor. As you can see, it was already cut by the blade, so it will prevent the other ones from getting cut. Okay, that's really good. See, here's a nice big piece that we're going to be using to make it more flaky. Oops. <laughs> and the bigger pieces of butter make it for more flaky, and I have another new technique that you'll see in a moment. So, now this is another part of what I'm doing that's different. Instead of putting it in a Ziploc bag or in another type of locked bag, I now put it directly into a bowl. And I'm going to use my fingers to finish doing it. I like to get up the whole dough so that it can be sure to have plenty to make my crust. Uh, I'm going to be making a tart crust with this one crust, a nine inch tart, a nine and a half inch tart, but it also would be ideal for a one crust pie. It's the same amount. Okay, that's a pretty good scrape. Okay, now with my fingers, I'm pinching it together. So instead of rolling it in the freezer weight bag, with a rolling pin, which is what I've done in the past, I'm doing it with my fingers. It gives me more control and it's easier than trying to get it out of the bag once it's done. And we'll see after we get most of it flattened, that needs to be, you know, the larger pieces, we'll see if we need to add a little bit. Oh, it's really nice and cold, so I can still squish it, but I wanna make sure that they're all flattened before I finish it. And what I do now is I like to let it sit in the refrigerator after I form a disc for 40 minutes and then I can roll it right away. And I can leave it overnight, but then I have to let it come to, not room temperature, but till it's malleable or flexible. And we'll be able to see pretty soon if it won't hurt to add a little extra cream because, uh, yeah, it's cream I would add at this point. Because it will hold together. I mean, you can take pinch a little bit and see will it hold when, once the butter's soft enough. And people have struggled with this sometimes and not been able to get it to come together well enough. So that's why I'm now giving you permission and myself to add a little extra cream, it won't hurt. If it were more water, it might make it tough, but with extra cream, and cream versus water gives it a lot more flavor. It's really, I mean, I think that adding cream cheese to a butter crust and using heavy cream offers the best flavor of any pie crust I know. You may compromise a little bit in flakiness, but it's you'll see plenty flaky as it is. See, it's beginning to really come together now. Okay, now if I were going to add any more butter, I'll show you how to do it. And then I'm going to put it on a big piece of plastic wrap. And I used to give it a, a three-fold, the way we do for puff pastry, but then I found, how am I going to make a round disc easily from a rectangle? And it took all these years to figure out that all I needed to do simply was to fold in the edges. It's not going to take anything away from it. I don't know why it took so long, but that's the main reason that I wanted to show you, because it makes such a big difference in flakiness. Okay, it's almost all nice little granular pieces. And I usually use a spatula when I'm adding anything extra. To so push it aside and here's some nice loose crumbs that will benefit from a little bit of extra cream. <clears throat> Oops, wait, that's maybe under a teaspoon. See, so it picks it right up. and move it aside again, and I'll do one more. 
If you find that you've added too much cream, all you have to do is add a little more flour when you're rolling it out so it doesn't stick. But generally, you don't need to. Okay, just one last little dab. When I roll out the dough, if I need more flour, and with the dough mat, I find that I hardly need any flour at all, what I do is I use Wonder Flour because it's partially pre-cooked and what happens is that it's like little ball bearings. It makes the dough not stick, but it doesn't add extra toughness and dryness because you need so very little. Okay, now where did I put the big, ah, oh, here, the piece of plastic wrap is here. Now the reason that it looks pretty loose is because the butter is very cold. It's 65 degrees in here, so the butter still hasn't really smushed together. But when it sits that 40 minutes in the refrigerator, or longer, it gives it a chance for the flour to absorb the moisture. Because the refrigerator is about 37 to 42 degrees, so it doesn't freeze it, it just chills it to be more equal. And then of course, instead of making it all come together 100%, see it's already pretty good. I'm going to do that three turn, you can even do it twice, call it an envelope turn or business letter fold. And that will bring it together. I love my little rolling pin because it's great for cookies. It's also great for small tasks like this. Less wieldy than a, unwieldy rather, than a, the large mother's size. And you can already see these flakes of butter in the dough, which I love. Because I know what that's going to translate to. A wondrously flaky dough. And it mostly is holding together, but after the turn, it will move completely. I would love to have another piece of plastic wrap, but it's moved away from me. <laughs> so I'll just push this in. Okay. I want it to be a little bit longer so I can do the three turn. You can see more and more the marbling of the butter. Okay, now I'm going to fold it in in thirds. See, it's still a pretty ragged dough, but that's going to mean that it's tender. It's not going to be overworked. Okay, and then fold the other part over in thirds. Now here's where we have the rectangle, and how are you going to make a nice round disc from a rectangle? That was why I sometimes thought it's just not worth doing, but you'll see what I do in a moment. I'll make it more squared off. You can see it's not at all sticky. You want it to be a little bit wider before making the disc shape. This is going to be the chocolate caramel tart from the Baking Basics. We're thinking about all our favorite things that we like to have again. There's always so many new things to try. I feel guilty going back to the old, but we really miss that chocolate caramel tart. 
Okay, so we're almost at a square shape now, and what I'll do is just push in these sides. And by the way, if you only have a small plastic wrap, you can just overlap. Okay, we're just about round now. It's as simple as that. I used to try rolling from the square shape and always had a lot of waste at the corners. I see this is just regular plastic wrap and it's not tearing, it's holding up really well. So now what I'll do is I'll flip it over so that part can roll flat. And you can really see what a beautiful dough this is with all those pieces of butter in it. Oops, come back in there. <laughs> okay. And when I actually roll the dough out into the full size, and there were markings on the mat that helped me realize when I get to that point, which makes it easier. And it always is a little bit of cracking at the edges. I just squeeze them together. But that part gets cut off anyway, because that's the extra. And that's it. It's about seven inches, six to seven inches, ready to be refrigerated for 40 minutes and then rolled into a tart crust.